Let's now build our member class. So what's really a class? You can think about a class is like a template. So you can create objects as instances from a particular class, and the class will define exactly how each object uh, will look like uh, when you create it on the, at, uh, at the runtime. Uh, we'll see exactly how you can create objects in just a moment. Okay, so think about for member, you can think about it's a, a template for uh, member objects. So here I'm using the form plural over here. You can see a, a single member template can really uh, allow you to create multiple member objects at the runtime. So that's the one thing you should really notice the, uh, the difference between uh, class and objects. Okay, And then what should be really put inside uh, a particular uh, class? If you recall uh, for the classic utilities that we defined before, so you basically have no variables uh, that's at the class level. You simply just got a list of uh, static methods, but that's not the case anymore. So now we have to uh, talk about the structure uh, for a class in general in the context of OOP. Okay, so let me just uh, outline the uh, outline structure for you, and then we'll start building each uh, section by section. Okay, so section number one, it would be uh, for attributes. Okay, and you can think about the attributes are simply class level uh, variables, meaning that all methods can access them. It's really important. So remember uh, what we did before. So for each method, uh, for each utility method like that's static, we simply say the variables you declare inside the method can only be visible inside that particular method. It cannot be uh, accessible outside that particular method. But once we declare attributes uh, at, a uh, at a class level, so it will be outside the scope for any uh, method that we're going to define. So it will be global. Okay. So that's about attributes. Uh, let's define another section here. Uh, we'll define as many attributes as we need uh, in just a moment. And the second section will be constructor. Okay, constructor will be for you to uh, actually create instances of the current class. When I say the current class, I meant the member class over here, depending on which class uh, you're talking about. Okay. Okay, and then we also got uh, after constructor, we also got methods, and there are two kinds of method. Uh, another, two, uh, you can think about there are three kinds of methods. Constructor is the first uh, special kind of methods, and another two kinds will be one is called uh, accessors, the other one is called mutators. Let uh, let's uh, write them out. Okay, for the methods uh, over here, uh, let's say accessor, accessor methods. So you can think about accessor literally simply just mean it's actually meant for you to uh, get access to some information for the method to return something back to whoever is calling that, right? So that's accessor method, which are uh, returning some useful information. So here, returning is really important. So that means uh, whenever you're defining accessor method, you must have a sync. Uh, you must have a return. Uh, statements uh, which we did previously. You can think about the utility methods that we did before. In some way, they are like accessor methods. In some way, okay, synthetically. All right, and the last section we should have is called mutator methods. Mutator method, the last section, okay. And then, so you can think about uh, not returning anything, meaning that you must not actually put any return statements for the uh, mutator method because they simply return so-called void. Okay, I'll talk about it in, uh, uh, when we get there. Uh, not returning anything, but it's going to modify modifying attributes. You can think about mutator methods typically are really meant to modify whatever attributes that are actually declare under this section over here, right? You can think about that. Okay? We'll see exactly how accessor methods and mutator methods and also constructor everything work together uh, by the end of the week. We'll definitely see some simple example. All right, so these are my recommended uh, sections for you to put in. If you're already familiar with Java, you might note that you can actually uh, mix the order of attributes and methods. Feel free, that's okay. However, if you're only the beginner uh, to Java, I will recommend you kind of follow this uh, particular style of uh, grouping 
uh, different variables, uh, different attributes, and also different methods. That's how I would recommend it. Once you get more experience and once you graduate from this course, you can feel free to put in whatever order you like uh, for your Java programs. Okay. Okay, let's now build section by section. First of all, let's now do for attributes. So what attributes should each member have, right? Think, uh, so here, attributes is really like a design uh, activities we are doing right now. So for the first year, you don't really have to uh, think too much about what attributes you really need to have for each class. Uh, when you get to the third year, you will, have, you will actually have more chance of doing such analysis. So I'll just tell you what attributes each member should have. But of course, you can feel free to extend the class if you wish, as I recommended before. Let's say for each member we should have, let's say some ID for the member. So now what should, so there should, there should be some ID uh, for uh, the member, but now we're missing a type. So what should be the type for the, uh, for the ID, right? So we remember whenever you declare a variable, you must have a type for the variable. So now what should be the type for the ID? So I would suggest you think about some example ID, so you can, uh, and then you can uh, infer backwards about what type it is. So it depends on whether, uh, for example, either you want the ID to be, for example, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. That could be simply just numerical ID. That'll be one uh, example. Another example could be you you just want the uh, the ID to really contain. Uh, let me just uh, uh, let's say without the quotes. So that'll be one. Uh, so this numerical ID can just be stored as an integer for sure. What about the second kind? The second kind could be maybe with some symbols. It could be a. One, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, maybe uh, let's say J, for example. That could be another uh, kind of ID for the member, right? Uh, I would say which one to choose is really a design decision. Uh, there's really no right or wrong. But I would say for this particular example here, let me just uh, keep it simple. Let's say we just uh, talk about any ID you have is simply just an integer value. And then let's assume the integer value is going to be uh, uh, can be just stored uh, within a 32-bit uh, integer. Let's just make that assumption, okay? So here, I'll just say, for example, okay, that I'm just trying to show you exactly how I make the design decision. If you believe for your particular application, you're going to include some symbol that's going to make the ID non-numeric. In that case, you definitely cannot just use integer, for sure. You, can, you may, have to, uh, may want to use a string instead of an integer. But for now, I'll just say int over here, okay? Okay, integer ID, and also, let me have another one over here. Let's go character and the type of the member. Okay, so now what I'm thinking about is uh, already I made a design decision for you. For example, we can say S for silver member. Okay, and also we got B for bronze member. And also we got uh, G for golden member. Okay, let's say uh, for the silver member, you just pay the reg uh, you will just pay the regular rates. And also for the bronze, uh, member, you can pay. Uh, you can pay the uh, facilities with a ten percent discount, and maybe for golden uh, member, you can uh, pay the uh, facilities with a fifteen percent discount. Right? Let's say you know. Let's make the policy. Okay, may not be real, but you know, uh, it might. It's very sensible uh, policy. Let's say for the bronze member with a ten percent uh, discount rate on facilities. Okay, and then let's say for the golden member, it's a fifteen percent. Uh, discount rate. Okay, so just a documentation for you to remind yourself. Okay, and also uh, let's say uh, we don't uh, in the uh, whenever you want to pay for the facilities, you never pay by cash, right? So whenever you want to use the gym, you want to use the uh, you want to reg uh, you want to go to a, a attend a spinning class, you always have to swipe your membership card. In which case, it's going to uh, withdraw a certain amount from your uh, membership uh, balance. Okay. So let's now uh, just say double balance. So this is gonna be a numerical balance. And then for example, maybe attending a spinning class will cost you maybe $2.5. And then using the gym for one hour is gonna cost you maybe uh, $5, you know, something like that. So every time when you actually want to use a facility, it's going to deduct the balance for your member uh, for your membership. And then uh, if your membership uh, simply goes to zero, or simply not sufficient for you to use another facility, you will have to deposit certain amount into your member, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, let's uh, just do uh, a few more, uh, maybe a couple of more uh, attributes. Let's say also the string, the name. So you might be wondering, What's, what, what's the difference between name and also ID? I would say every member should have a unique ID. 
However, two members might have the same name. For example, there might be、uh, two members in the club whose names are simply just Jackie. So maybe one is Jackie Jordan, the other one is Jackie Wong, right? So,、uh, so you see my point, right? So here you can make it even more sophisticated. You can call that maybe string、uh, first name and also string last name. But for now, I'll just make it simple. Let's say the name here is simply just a、uh, uh, first name. Okay. Okay. Let me just、uh, also put. Let's say for the uh, uh, for the user,、uh, for the member, we also we are also going to register there. Uh, let's say weights and heights、uh, in the club, right? Of course, it will be kept confidential. But for now, for programming purpose, we'll just uh, see uh, what they are. Okay, we can say also double、uh, the weights and also double the heights. All right, all right. You can see now we got actually、uh, a number of variables over here. So that means every objects of type member, which I'll show you how to create. Every object of type member or every object instantiated from the member class is going to have these attributes to really form its structure. So every、uh, member object is going to have exactly the same structure. However, every object of type member they may have different ID value, they may have different type value, they may have different attribute values、uh, in general. Okay, that's something I want to mention、uh, as a verbal remark. But I'll show you exactly what I meant、uh, when I visualize it. One more thing I would like to uh, say: uh, there,、uh, there is a modifier、uh, in Java called private,、uh, meaning that、uh, let me just put a private over here, and I'll explain that、uh, briefly to give you some intuition. So, whenever you declare any、uh, variables for your class, it would be a good practice to really put private in front of it. Okay. Okay, like that. You can see、uh, not only that I say it's an integer ID, but also I say it's a private、uh, variable. So whenever I say private, that means the variable is only、uh, accessible within this particular class member. Okay. So let, let's say later on, if I create other class, let's say I create a class called club. The club cannot really get access to the ID、uh, variable directly. They will have to really call and access a method in order to get access to the ID. Right. That's the idea. So let me write it down. Okay,、uh, we wouldn't really focus to、uh, if, uh, so using private versus public is more like a design decision you will have to make. But for now, if you don't mind, just take it for granted. Every time when you、uh, define your attributes, simply put them as private. And then I'll try to spend a little bit more time talking about this once we、uh, are familiar with、uh, how everything works together. So I will maybe at the end of.、Uh, Uh, the later weeks, I will actually、uh, show to you.、Uh, what if you don't have private? What's going to happen, right? I'll show to you later. Okay. So private simply means uh, private uh, variables are only accessible within the current class. Okay. Let me fix the typo here. So are、uh, only accessible within the current class. Okay. For other classes to Access these、uh, private variables.、Uh, call a public. So here, public, you're not.、Uh, it's not really、uh, strange to you. So public simply means it's、uh, open to any other class other than the current one. Okay. Call a public、uh, access method, which we will define、uh, inside this section over here. Right. We'll see that. Okay. And then、uh, let me just fix the typo over here. Okay. Access. All right. So, guys, I think、uh, for now,、uh, let me recap.、Uh, recap very quickly. Okay. Whenever you want to declare attributes or class level variables, what you got to do is you got to define、uh, the variable name for sure, variable name, and also、uh, the type for the variable: integer, character, double, and string. So I give you many、uh, types already.、Uh, the only thing I didn't really give to you is boolean, but you can try that as well for yourself. And、uh, one thing you should really notice is for good uh, design uh, practice, we should also put private, meaning that for all the attributes that we're going to create for this class, they're only accessible within the class. So we can choose to reveal certain uh, certain uh, attributes to outside to any outside classes by using the、uh, access methods. It's something called encapsulation. Okay, I'll write it down here. Encapsulation, meaning that we don't really have to. Uh, we don't really have to make、uh, all the、uh, 
uh, attributes accessible to outside classes, but only certain uh, certain ones of them. But we can choose. So whatever we want to make uh, accessible to other uh, classes, we can simply use access methods. Right? That's something I will show to you step by step. All right. So we are pretty much uh, close to the point that we are batch, uh, we're basically at a point that we, we can already visualize the uh, uh, the objects uh, creation. One thing to sh uh, mention here, even though I put constructors over here, I haven't put anything yet. However, in the case where you simply don't declare any constructors explicitly, Java will actually de uh, declare implicitly a default constructor for you. Okay, let me put a point. But as soon as you put any uh, constructor explicitly, the default constructor will disappear. Okay, that's the principle. So I want to show you in the current video how, how to use the uh, default constructor. But that's not, not a common case. But you know, it's good to know uh, for your knowledge. Okay, so now here I'd say without declaring any constructor explicitly, explicitly uh, a default constructor uh, is available by default okay and that constructor here uh, that constructor there uh, the default one is simply just going to initialize all the variables to their default value for example ID over here would just be integer just zero and then uh, character will see exactly uh, will see what it is. And also for the balance, double will just be 0, 0.0. And also for the string, it's going to be null, right? Simply that means it stores uh, no meaningful uh, string. And also for double here, just 0, 0.0. All right, let's now try to create uh, a new object. Okay, let's see how we can do it. And I would suggest before we go to the JUnit test, let's now try to visualize this using a console application, right? I'm going to use a console application, JUnit test, and also I'm going to visualize it on iPad, and also I'm going to show you in the debugger, right? I want to show you all the complete picture from different angle. All right, so let's now create a console application, and then we can create class over here. Let's say uh, maybe member app over here, right? Doesn't matter. Okay, so I can you can call a member or member tester if you wish, but let's call it a member app. Okay, uh, later weeks we're gonna add more classes. We can create different apps. Okay, make sure you create. Uh, you choose the main uh, method here and say finish. All right, let's see how we can uh, create a new uh, objects of type member. Okay, so this will be the new syntax you will have to know. It's not a time to learn about the new keyword. First of all, declare the. Uh, uh, the type of the uh, objects you want to create. So I would say member. Remember, I think uh, so this every time if you create a new class yourself, the class name can be used as a type. Okay, meaning that at the runtime, you can store any address for that particular object. But I'll talk about address in just a moment. Let me go back to member app here. So I can say member over here. And then you may want to say control and space. And then you want to make sure you actually uh, import uh, this particular member class from the model package, right? You want to choose it, okay? So you can see import member uh, model that member. So make sure you do that, okay? So member, and then we can say uh, member one, member two, member one is new, okay? So the new, whenever you want to create a new object, you want to use a new keyword. So pretty much like whenever you want to create a new array, you also have to use a new keyword, right? So after this, you have to really give a constructor, right? So we, we said before, uh, since at the moment, the member class has no uh, constructor explicitly defined or declared. So that means the default one will be can be used. And whenever we want to use constructor, so here's a rule in Java. The constructor must have the same name as the class name. So it will be just a member, okay? So for constructor, I'll just use a member over here. Okay, and then since it's default constructor, it will have no parameters over here. So simply just empty. Okay, just uh, like that. All right, let's create another one. Uh, let's say member, member two, and then new member over here, right? I'm just creating another one, right? So I'm basically using the default constructor over here, member and also member. They are default simply because they have no parameters over here, right? Typically. Okay, and also I'm using uh, the new keyword twice, meaning that I'm creating two objects. And then object number one uh, is called member one. Object number two is called member two. All right, and let's now try to visualize exactly what this is. 